Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, we are picking up on a uh, on a, uh, a project now. Um, I made a little list over here on the board. I've got too many machines that are uh, that are uh, that are projects. Uh, I got the Autometric. I got the Johnson saw. I got the little Diacro box and pan brake and the Leblanc tool and cutter grinder and now the Chicago box and pan brake. So all of those need a little bit of help and uh, so I'm feeling a little bit <laughs> behind the curve on projects so uh, uh, I need to whack some of these out of the way so we're going to take them in order and we're going to start banging these things out. So uh, first up is the Autometric and um, so we're going to go over and take a look at it and see what the next steps are and um, um, start uh, fabricating the pieces that, uh, that need to go on that machine to get it operational. Uh, so we'll talk about that when we go over to the machine. So let's get an apron on, let's go over there, let's uh, check that thing out and see what we're going to start on first on that. Okay, <clears throat> so we're looking at the, uh, the Autometric Resurrection here. And um, I just want to kind of go over the plan uh, of what I'm going to do here. So this is kind of a, a strange machine as uh, if you've watched some of the other videos you've kind of uh, seen that. I, I did a demo video on this so uh, with it actually running. Um, but what I want to show today here is uh, the first step in uh, getting this thing operational again. So. Um, there was a platen here that I removed and uh, I'll show a picture of that uh, coming off there. Um, anyway, that platen's off and what we put on here is uh, what's equivalent to a compound rest on a, on a lathe. So what this is, is this is the, uh, the base for a subspindle here. So we have a main spindle here and there is a mountable subspindle that goes on here. Okay. So the idea here um, is, in fact let me just plop it up there. This is the subspindle here. Just dials into that. Okay. And uh, interestingly this is, uh, this is an R8 spindle here. Okay. So we can put a tool or a chuck or uh, something like that. And it's got a little drawbar here to, to pull that up. Uh, which, this is really what intrigued me here about the possibilities of this machine. Okay, so now let me, uh, we're going to spin this around here. And you know what? Let me double check and make sure you, you guys can see all that. Yeah, okay, that works. Um, so... This is the this is the stock motor mounting plate here, and this went on like so. And um, so there was a motor here. Actually, uh, um, the motor mounted on this on the opposite side, and a pulley projected into this area. And then it had a bunch of step pulleys here to change speeds. Well, I don't have the stock motor. All I have is the stock mount. So, but what I do have is I have a C-face motor um, and a variable frequency drive. So we're going to mount that motor here in this direction with a single pulley here and a variable frequency drive so we can actually power this spindle and adjust the speed of it on the fly. Okay, So that's, uh, that's part of the resurrection here. So, And that's what we're going to work on today in this first episode is this motor mount. So that's the key out of the gate here is to get that motor mounted. But I also wanted to talk about uh, a, an addition that I'm going to add to this that, uh, that will make this extra interesting. So let me, let's pop this off here. <clears throat> so like I said, what we have here is after I've removed this platen, I have this, uh, um, actually, you know what, maybe I'm going to move the camera and bring it around the other side and then we can talk about this a little bit better over here. Okay, so we're back, we're over on this side. So what I was saying is I removed this, uh, this kind of work platen here that's kind of like a mill table. Um, but it has a rotary, a rotary table underneath here, although it's not powered. But I can set and index this uh, uh, much like a compound rest. So I, I got to thinking, 
Th this table here is, is powered by a, uh, a motor, so this, this will turn. Uh, so imagine a, a lathe faceplate here. I can also disconnect this and then put this on a, a kind of a worm gear so I can index here. But what makes it interesting here is uh, it's got a uh, like a number five or six more staper in there. This is a 5C uh, collet adapter. Oh my gosh, look at that, it plugs right in. So now um, imagine a, a collet set up here or a chuck or some other type of work holding and I'm just gonna put this in here just to kind of simulate a part. Get that in there, find the key. Okay, so let's pretend that's a shaft. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if we had a tool post here that we could mount a lathe tool? Because what do we have here? We have basically a lathe, right? We got a compound rest. We've got a powered feed in this direction. We've got a cross feed this way. So basically it's a lathe. It's a lathe, it's a mill. <laughs> it's a parachute. It's a lot of things, okay? Now, let's, uh, let's expand on that thought. And uh, let's... <clears throat> put this back up here for a sec. So now we have a powered subspindle here that we can apply to the work also and feed it in. So, or at an angle or no angle. So we can drill patterns, we can mill slots, we can drill holes at an angle, we can mill slots at an angle, we can mill by indexing this, we can mill prismatic faces. Um, that they have a particular angle, okay, by setting this. So there's lots of possibilities here, and that's why I'm really interested in getting this going. So, enough yapping about that. So this plate right here, we're going to make an adapter plate here to mount a quick change tool post here, so that we can take the tool post on and off, or mount the subspindle, and so we can be a, we can be a mill or a lathe anytime we feel like it, okay? Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the goal, but today what we're working on is we're gonna work on this motor mount for the, uh, the VFD drive to get this spindle operational. Okay, so basically the, the shape that we, uh, that we want here is, is similar to this. Um, so the mounting is very similar with this pattern, and this pattern's cocked a little bit. So I've taken some measurements over on the machine, and uh, I actually modeled this up in SolidWorks. So I have a, I have a, a, a drawing to kind of go by here, um, and I have to adjust the hole size there. Uh, anyway, uh, so you know we could get real fancy here and uh, and mill all that on the rotary table and do all that, but you know for what this thing is, it's not really necessary. What I care about is. Um, the center to center here, okay, and even that's not that fussy. Um, and I care about the orientation of this pattern, okay, uh, and this pattern here to some degree. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do some old school layout here um, and lay out this profile. And, uh, and then we'll take it over to the mill and we're going to bore some holes and um, drill and countersink some holes. And, uh, and that should give us a motor mount. Um, so let's, uh, let's get to it. Um, and, uh, so I got a piece of plate here. This is uh, three quarters of an inch thick, okay. This is 20 millimeter plate. Uh, and this is just 6061 uh, aluminum. Um, it's got kind of a ragged cut on one side. Now, I plopped this up here and I'm like, oh boy, this is like really close. Now I've changed the sizes of these a little bit and pushed it together, so I think it will make it, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be close. So let's uh, let's uh, cross our fingers here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is definitely the long direction here. All right, let's. Uh, what do we want to do here? Let's get a center line. First. So I'm just going to go corner to corner here and, and get a good center line going, and this will be the our basically our basis here. Okay, nice bright center line. Okay, so uh, my you know what I'm going to need 
I'm gonna need a little center punch here. Let me go grab a, uh, I'm gonna go grab a center punch real quick. Yeah, it took me about a half an hour to pick out which hammer I wanted to use. Just kidding. Okay, so uh, we got a center line and uh, let's do our large radius first. And that radius is 3.56 inches. All right, so I've got my, uh, uh, my big Starrett uh, 92 uh, caliper, excuse me, dividers here. And these are cool because um, you can take this leg out and it fits a pencil there too, which is kind of nice. Um, so they don't give these away, but I think it's uh, one of the, uh, the better... Uh, on this side. Um, better pairs of dividers. Okay, so 3.56. I'm going to burn an inch here. I'm going to set in the one inch and uh, go so I can get a rough setting. Okay, and then with this knob here, I can do a, I can do a fine adjust. And you can actually do a, a damn good job here because you can, you can bounce the legs and you can feel it click into, into the, uh, oops into the appropriate mark there. Okay, all right. So that should be uh, our radius. Now what I want to do is, as long as I'm on that center line, I can scooch it. What I want to do is just barely, so I'm I'm seeking a uh, to be tangent with these uh, with these, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stab in a little bit there, okay. And before I lose track of that little divot, I'm just going to deepen it slightly, okay. And uh, so let's do this. Chuck gave me these big fat uh, these big fat markers here, so let's uh, let's take advantage of those. Hopefully I've uh, <laughs> I've covered the area there. Actually, you know what? Let's just keep going there. Well, I got the thing out. We know we're going over there somewhere, right? All right. Let's uh, let that dry for a sec. All right. Oh, of course. <laughs> Never fails, right? <laughs> you think you got it all, but you don't. All right. Let's just really fill in here. All right. Whew. Getting dizzy now. All right. past. So what I'm going to do is I'll connect the tangents of these two uh, uh, these two center points here. So let me, uh, I'm going to change the camera a little bit and uh, we'll get in a little closer and then we'll lay out the center distance and then the second radius. Okay, so our center distance here is seven inches. So let's, uh, let's get that set up there. I'm burning an inch there just so I have a division to click into. All right, there's seven inches. And then from this point here, I'm just going to sweep a little spot there, double check and make sure I didn't make a bozo mistake. Yes, that's seven. Get a center pop here. Okay. Now we're going to set our second radius, which is 3.3 uh, inches. Okay. I 
cross our fingers. Whoo, that's pretty close. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's pretty stinking close. All right. So I want to sweep past a little bit so that I can catch the tangent easily. <laughs> I can't believe how close it is. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Okay, so now what we do, use our scribe here, and just to kind of get on the line there. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping the tip of the scribe into the, uh, into the scribe line there. The scriber into the scribe line. And then I swing this up until I get a mate there. And then I can trade sides. Make sure I like what I see there. Okay, and then get a nice tangent line there, okay? Let me do it from a little different angle there so you guys can see it. So in reality, it's going to be, it's a little, the tangent is going to be slightly forward because this is smaller than this. The tangent will be slightly forward from that center line, so somewhere in this region here. All right, we swing that up till we catch that tangent. Then I like to, I like to just trade sides and and check it. Okay. All right. All right. So that's kind of our outline. Man, I still blowing me away how close that is. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm gonna go ahead and because uh, it's kind of handy. We gotta. I won't do the holes or excuse me, the, uh, the fastener holes, but I will do these holes because we're gonna bore those on the mill. And um, uh, it's just nice to have a kind of a guideline for that. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that on camera. Why not, huh? Doesn't hurt, right? You know, some, you know, sometimes I don't shoot stuff like that because it's fairly straightforward, but some guys like to see it too, so. Alright, hopefully those are big enough <laughs> this time. Okay, so what size is it? 2.03. Alright. Oops. Actually, I'd probably like a, a smaller pair here of dividers for these littler holes, but. Oh, 30,000. Right, something like that. These are just guidelines here. We're not um, going to um, use those for anything precision, but it's just a reminder of uh, how far we go. And it just helps us not make a mistake. Okay, that's about right. And this other one, 3.75. Some crud in there. Um, I think these dividers need to be, uh, the tips need to be sharp and one direction it's not leaving a good line and the other direction it is, so that means it's got a little burr in the end. Um, so I should probably dress those. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're going to go over to the bandsaw and nip that out, do a little belt sanding work. Um, we'll probably mill those lines just because we can and, and, and it's easy. Uh, but these will be bandsawed and belt sanded to blend into those flats. So let's uh, let's go bandsaw.